Hello, I am Linda C. McCabe, author of Quest of the War Maiden and Fate of the Saracen Knight, adaptations from the Legends of Charlemagne. And this was a paper delivered at the 2019 International Congress on Medieval Studies held at the campus of Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The paper is entitled, To Die For, Duels by Knights in Orlando Inamorato and Orlando Furioso over swords, horses, heraldic symbols, and women. It was part of the session, Loving Your Arms, before the NRA, Heroes and Their Weapons, sponsored by the Society Roncevall American Canadian Branch. Let me share my screen now. And to play from start. Epic poetry is filled with larger than life heroes performing extraordinary feats of strength and bravery. The two poems I examine in this paper are Orlando in a Morato by Matteo Maria Boiardo and its more famous successor poem, Orlando Furioso by Ludovico Ariosto. Both are large contributions in the legends of Charlemagne. The origin of this legend cycle is attributed to the anonymous French poem from the 11th century, La Chanson de Roland, which memorialized a real life defeat of Charlemagne's army in the year 778 in the Roncesvalles Pass in the M Pyrenees Mountains. This poem took a tragedy and retold it in mythic style. Roland's death was magnificent. The story became so popular, he could not remain dead. More stories were told featuring this hero, Roland in French and Orlando in Italian. Today's Hollywood executives, if questioned about bringing popular characters back to life in sequels, can simply point to this example because audiences wanted more. I mentioned this to pay homage to the sponsor of the session, the Society Roncesvalles, American Canadian branch. Without La Chanson de Roland, there never would have been Orlando Furioso. So there are many swords in Orlando and Amorato and Orlando Furioso. Several characters were willing to die to obtain the right to wield Durandana or Durandal. Not only that, but there were other disputes over horses, heraldic syndrome, standards, and women that were the cause of other duels, some leading to death. Famous casting director Michael Shirtliff defined the element of drama into a three-word maxim. Conflict is drama. There is an overabundance of conflict and drama in both of these poems. So much so that it would be a disservice to even attempt to compile a comprehensive listing of all the duels in both poems for a 20 minute time frame. Instead, I will highlight in a narrative style some of the more important duels that support this paper. I will start with the character of Orlando being in love with Princess Angelica of Cafe. That is the reason behind the title of Orlando in Amorato, Orlando in love. Then his discovery that his love for her was unrequited caused him to go mad or furioso. Orlando fell in love with Angelica the moment he laid eyes on her when she, her brother Argalia, and four giants who served as their bodyguards disrupted Charlemagne's Pentecost feast with a challenge that any knight who could best Argalia in the joust would earn her as a prize. 
The terms of the contest were that the challengers would get one attempt at jousting, and those who lost to Argalia would surrender and become prisoners. All men in attendance were spellbound by her beauty and agreed. This was all a nefarious plot by her father, King Galifron, to abduct the best knights in the world and force them into his service. Argalia wore enchanted armor and bore an enchanted lance that would cause any opponent to fall from his horse by the merest touch of the lance. The magician, Melagigi, or Moji in French, discovered the plot, but he was soon captured and imprisoned in a dungeon back in Cafe. The, plat, the plot unraveled when the second contestant, Ferraguto or Faro, a warrior from Al Andalus or Hispania, refused to surrender after his loss. Instead, Ferraguto challenged Argalia to a duel, murdered the four giants, and killed Argalia by an unchivalrous act. He stabbed his opponent in an area traditionally unprotected by armor, the groin. Things became chaotic and warriors chased after Angelica, hoping to claim her. Ferraguto dueled with Orlando while another warrior, Rinaldo, stopped for a drink of water from an enchanted fountain while Angelica quenched her thirst from a magical stream. They drank of opposing magical waters. She became enamored with Ronaldo while he became repulsed by Angelica. Ronaldo returned to Charlemagne's side whilst Angelica used magic to return to her father's kingdom and Orlando, Orlando followed her eastward. Oops, too fast. A war was being waged in the fortified city of El Braca, where more, multiple armies were amassed to determine who would claim Angelica. Agrican, the Khan of Tartary, led forces from nine kingdoms attacking the walls, and Sacrapont, the king of Circassia, led forces from seven kingdoms defending Angelica. Orlando, joined Sacrapont's forces in defending Angelica's honor. Orlando entered into a single combat duel with Agrican that lasted from noon until the dark of night, bold and then bolder in hard fight. They paused their duel, and during their midnight discussion, Agrican learned Orlando also loved Angelica. This was more than he could bear, so their fight renewed under the light of the moon. Their fight lasted until dawn when Orlando finally delivered blows to slice his opponent's limbs. Agrican, sensing imminent death, begged to be baptized as a Christian by Orlando. Meanwhile, Gradasso, king of Satakana, a vast empire to the east of India, was considered to be the wealthiest and most powerful king in the world. Yet, that notoriety was not enough for Gradasso. He wanted two items money could not buy because their owners would not sell at any price. Gradasso coveted Orlando's sword, Dorindana, and Ronaldo's famed horse, Bayard. Gradasso could only obtain those two fine accoutrements of knighthood by force. And so he amassed 150,000 troops to invade the West. Imagine what it would have been like to be a soldier who travels from the Far East westward through the Indian Ocean around the continent of Africa, risking your life to fight in a war because your leader wants a horse? and a sword. Gradasso attacked 
Hispania, hoping that Charlemagne's forces would come to the aid of their neighbor, Marsilio. Rinaldo led the Frankish forces, 50,000 strong, in the defense. Gradasso's forces included 2,000 elephants with howdahs and one giant king who rode upon a giraffe. The Franks arrived during the fight over the city of Barcelona. Gradasso gave orders to capture Rinaldo along with his horse, Bayaro. The two men met on the field of battle and after a brief but intense altercation, their duel was deferred until the next day when the two would meet alone on the seashore, six miles from their armies, on foot, armed with only swords and shields. That was the plan. But back in the East, Angelica longed for Rinaldo. She coerced his cousin, the wizard Moji, to bring Rinaldo to her. His trick, a magic trick, Rinaldo into thinking he was battling the fierce Rodasso, but instead he was fighting a demon disguised as the king of Saracana. Rinaldo was lured onto a ship by the demon and then, poof, his opponent disappeared and he was on board a ship transporting him to where Angelica awaited him. Rinaldo left Bayard with a brother. After Rinaldo did not return to his camp, the Franks assumed the worst and retreated back to the Frankish Empire. Marsilio, the leader of Al-Andalus, after learning the Franks abandoned his defense, surrendered to Gradasso and agreed to join forces to invade the Frankish Empire. Soon Gradasso's united forces overwhelmed the Franks and Charlemagne was made a prisoner. Gradasso made it clear that all would be restored if only Bayard and Durandana were his. Charlemagne agreed and sent out a proclamation to only have it land on resistant ears. Astolfo was widely regarded as the weakest of Charlemagne's paladins and oft described as a fool due to his braggadocio. He refused his emperor and said that if Gradasso wanted Bayard, he would have to fight him in the field. Gradasso was persuaded that Hestalfo was no threat, and so he agreed to the joust. However, Astolfo had grabbed Argalia's enchanted lance that had been left behind. It was dipped in gold and suited Astolfo's fashion sense. They met, exchanged boasts, and Astolfo said, on our first joust, I'll knock you down. But since you are so courteous, I will not ask you for your wealth. I only want your prisoners. You and your troops may safely leave and travel to the pagan east. Radasso said, that suits me fine, and so I swear, as God's my witness. Gradasso was humiliated as he fell from his saddle in a single pass. He released his prisoners, left Paris with his troops, but did not give up his desire to possess Bayard and Durandana. Somehow along the way, he became trapped in a magical realm and would later meet another challenger for Durandana. Mandricardo became the king of Tartary after his father, Agricon, died from dueling with Orlando over Princess Angelica. Mandricardo was shamed publicly when an old man accused him of cowardice for not challenging Orlando to avenge the wrongful death of his father. Mandricardo set out on, quest, on his quest alone, on foot, without arms or armor. He vowed he would seize anything he needed along the way. On his way, he came upon a magical realm that had ensnared many famous warriors. Mandricardo became the first whose prowess overcame all the obstacles and various monsters within that realm, and he earned his liberty as well as all the surviving warriors. The Fountain Fae awarded Mandricardo a suit of armor 
that was once worn by Hector of Troy and made him swear not to bind another sword to his side until he reunited the armor with Hector's sword, Durandana. After their release, Mandricardo and Gradasso became traveling companions and learned of Agramante leading the North African forces allied with Marsilio's forces from Hispania to invade the Frankish Empire on a campaign to extend the reach of the Islamic Empire. Meanwhile, Renault arrived in the East, still repulsed by the thought of Angelica. There were a series of adventures in magical realms, a duel against his cousin Orlando in which both combatants hurled insults at the other. Eventually, Dudon was sent on a mission by Charlemagne, found both Orlando and Renault and called them back to the West to fight against Agramante. After Angelica heard that Renault had turned, gone west, Ronaldo, Renault, she asked Orlando to take her back with him to the Frankish Empire. Once Ronaldo returned to the west, he drank of the stream of love and Angelica drank of the fountain. This reversed the emotions they felt toward one another. She loathed him while he was once again beset with a red hot passion for her. Orlando and Ronaldo dueled again, but it was interrupted by Charlemagne. He decided Angelica would be awarded to the paladin who proved himself more valuable in the following day's battle against Agramante's forces. That is, until Angelica escaped. Speaking of Agramante, previously, he had called a war council at his palace in Bizerta with 32 kings of North Africa. He announced his intention of invading the Frankish Empire for glory. Rodemont was the first to agree to Agramont's mission. Others followed suit, but the old king of Garamanta rose up and spoke of a prophecy regarding a warrior raised in obscurity who was necessary for the mission to succeed. Agramont decided to send a thief east to steal a magic ring that would nullify all enchantments and reveal the hiding location of this prophesied warrior. Brunello was the thief, and he not only stole the ring from Angelica's finger, but he also stole two swords and a horse on that fateful trip. Brunello returned with the ring, and expedition was sent to Mount Carena. Ruggiero, the prophesied hero was lured out of his invisible castle by a tournament held underneath. Brunello gave the young man gifts so he could compete, and after being named tournament champion, Ruggiero joined Agramont's forces. After a bruising battle outside of Montalban, Charlemagne's forces abandoned the field to the Muslim army. Ruggiero came upon Rodemont, still battling with a Christian soldier, and offered an uncommon act of chivalry by taking over the duel so that a Christian soldier could return to Charlemagne's side. That led to Ruggiero and Rodemont meeting. And it was hate at first sight. After Ruggiero bested Rodemont, the Christian soldier who he had relieved had returned and he learned that she was a beautiful woman named Bradamante. Cupid shot his arrows deep into both their hearts before fate cruelly separated them. Ruggiero began searching for Bradamante in the dark of night when he came upon Mandricardo and Gradasso. The three men joined forces and searched for Ruggiero's lost companion until dawn broke. Mandricardo once dawn broke, saw that Ruggiero was carrying a shield with a white eagle on a field of blue, and that enraged him. Because Ruggiero claimed, that the sigil, claimed this sigil through his noble ancestor Hector of Troy, whereas Mandricardo simply earned that honor to hold the armor worn by that paragon of virtue through the fountain fairy's magical realm. The two 
were about to duel over the right to bear that symbol when Ruggiero asked why Mandricardo was without a sword. He boasted he would not bind a sword to his side until he had Durandana. That's when Gradasso learned about his companion's desire for the same sword. And he claimed precedence to duel with Mandricardo over a sword that neither one possessed. Since Mandricardo had no sword, the two prideful men stripped local trees and began jousting with thick limbs. That duel became interrupted, but their dispute was unresolved. Later, Mandricardo was sent on a special mission to find the culprit who had massacred Muslim soldiers who were reinforcements to Agramante's forces now outside of Paris. Mandricardo thought correctly that such carnage might be the work of Orlando. On his journey, he came upon an encampment of Muslim soldiers who were escorting Doralis of Granada. She was betrothed to Rodemont. Mandricardo, hearing of Doralis's beauty, wanted to judge her beauty for himself. When his request was rebuffed, Mandricardo killed all of her escorts. He terrorized, abducted, and then seduced Doralis. Word about Doralis's companions and cat escorts being massacred reached to Rodemont in Paris, who left the army's encampment without a second thought. Mandricardo did meet up with Orlando, but before they duel, the brave Frank hung his beloved sword Durandana from the branch of a tree. The two warriors fought, but Mandricardo's horse became spooked and carried him from the site. After that, Orlando came upon the site where Angelica and the humble foot soldier named Medoro had fallen in love and had many romantic trysts. This knowledge drove Orlando mad. He tore off his armor and became feral. Mandricardo claimed Durandana, although it was not from getting his vengeance against Orlando, he just took the abandoned sword from the tree limb. Rodemont, after relentlessly chasing Mandricardo, came upon a fine horse being led by a young woman. He seized the fresh horse and then caught up with Mandricardo and Doralise. The two men were about to duel to the death over her when a messenger from Agramante interrupted and called them back to Paris. On their way, they came upon a party of warriors having a picnic in a town square. Mandricardo saw a beautiful woman in a fine gown and made the mistake of trying to make her a replacement bride for Rodemont. This was the fierce Queen Marfisa, who had succumbed to the entreaties of her male companions and put aside her armor for a silken gown. The insult to her honor led to multiple duels of Mandricardo against multiple males who were Marfisa's companions, and then a duel with Marfisa herself after she donned her armor. Rodemont became enraged that Mandricardo was fighting with others when his duel had been deferred until later. Ruggiero then arrived and he challenged Rodemont over his horse Frontino that had been wrested from Bradamont's handmaiden Hepalca. Mandricardo became enraged when he saw Ruggiero was still bearing the white eagle on a field of blue and challenged him. And Marfisa was still angry with Mandricardo for insulting her armor. Multiple duels over pride, women, a horse, and a standard. Now that is all the time I have, but there is more conflict and many more duels that could be covered. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and would like you in to invite you to read my novels that are available in both trade paperbacks and e-book formats. These conflicts and duels described 
are a large part of my narrative. They are available online at Amazon.com, and autographed copies can be purchased from the independent bookstore Kazoo Books in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You can visit them at kazoobooks.com, and please feel free to visit my website at questofthewarriormaiden.com, and there you can join my mailing list to learn when the third book will be available. Thank you. And, and, bye.